Welcome Pisces to your in-depth monthly horoscope for April 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. I'm going to share some standout details for you but please stay with me. I will explore in much greater depth all the ins and outs particularly relevant to your sign. And we must be mindful of the role of your two ruling planets. Your traditional ruler is Jupiter. And the ruler that many people are much more aware of is Neptune. And they're both hugely influential. On the very first day of this month, Neptune is in a square with the moon, which is going to require some care. But it's also forging a magnificent link with Venus and the part of fortune. And Jupiter, your traditional ruler, comes into an exact conjunction on the 21st for the first time in 14 years with the helter-skelter energies of Uranus. But the other thing to tell you about is Mars in your sign is going to be prompting that duo in quite a stunning way. So, so much to share with you. Please stay with me for more. But if you are new to my channel, Thank you so much for joining us. This is very much a community. If you have any thoughts, please share them. I interact with each comment. If you're a returning visitor, thank you so much for your company. I much appreciate all your likes, comments, shares, and subscriptions. If you've yet to subscribe, I'm racing towards 120,000 subscribers. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. That means every time I drop a video, you will get an alert. And if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and embrace the power of personal astrology, if you give me three pieces of your birth data of time and date and place, or if you don't know your time, date and place, I can produce for you your life roadmap report. This will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, but also a much more intimate understanding of how to work with these energies more effectively going forwards. And in my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12 month transit report. That's the moving planets in the sky interacting with that unique blueprint that only you were given when you were born. Please see the link below for more. So Pisces on the screen now, I'm sharing the event chart for the month. And you can see, let's look at the position of Neptune and Venus. Now they're in your first house, so that's very much about your identity. You've got Mars there, which is terrific because Mars rules the first house. So on the face of it, it could give you a big burst of extra vitality. It's just marking your diary for week two, maybe not quite so much vitality or indeed quite a lot of frustration because during that week, Mars will apply to Saturn. And if something isn't moving quite as quickly as you would like, it could see you feeling somewhat overwhelmed and a little bit exasperated. But that combination between Neptune and Venus can be very magical. If you are a person who's very invested in arts, fashion, music, creativity, performance, well, what a hot combination that is, particularly with the part of fortune very supportive. The catch is that position of the moon. The moon's right at the top of your chart in house 10 in the free-spirited Sagittarius. Now this means it's going to be more difficult to disguise your feelings throughout this month. Now that could be in a very positive way. So if you're feeling bubbly and upbeat, people will know. If you're feeling a little bit less ebullient, they could also know as well. But that moon position you can see is in an exact square with Neptune. That combination is a bit like the moon card in tarot. We can pull the moon card out and think, oh, that's good if we're talking about maybe a baby or where we live or redecoration. It could be a positive, but the moon card often talks about self-doubt and confusion. And I've got to be honest, if you're not completely dialed in to your direction of travel and very firm about your life direction, that can create a degree of uncertainty. And also, maybe you're going to encounter people who seem to be changeable, mysterious, 
don't really give you the firm answers you want and that could be in a professional matter. But Jupiter and Uranus are very close together, your other ruler, right at the start of the month. To be honest, they started to tighten up within three degrees during the last days of March and they're going to be within three degrees through to the first week of May. So it's, it's a big transit. I think a lot of astrologers are putting a lot of emphasis on it. But let's think about the sign that they're both in. So Uranus is not so good in Taurus, it's in fall. Jupiter quite likes being in Taurus because what Taurus does is slows down Jupiter. Not so much your rulership, which is very spiritual. It's more the rulership of Sagittarius through Jupiter, which can be a bit exaggerated, a bit boasty. Um, a bit inclined to promise more than it can realistically deliver. But for you in house three, it can be to do with your ideas, your mode of communication. And you could, particularly with Mars applying to them by the 21st, and the sun having moved into your third house on the 19th, really dazzle people with your passion. But let's wind right back to day one. Because you can see in your chart that Mercury is in your second house of everyday finance but it doesn't have that little RX symbol next to it. And that's because Mercury doesn't go retrograde until later on, on the first day. But it is going to be retracing its steps through to day 25, starting at 27 degrees and going back to just within 16, 15 degrees and 58 minutes. And that's a big rewind, of course. So it's possible this month you will be revisiting things to do with finances, things to do with the foundations in your life, quite earthy things, things that are quite Taurian, even though for you the energy is housed by the host Aries, which of course is passionate. Mercury in Aries, for example, can be quite impatient, but it can be very direct if you need to discuss a financial matter. So Mercury here would see you want to engage with it you know, as quickly as you possibly can, but it may be that some information you need to get could uh, could be slow to come to you because of the retrograde. There may be some obstacles that are going to come up that are not ideal, but we have to see Mercury retrogrades as a window of opportunity. There are people, because the whole Mercury retrograde uh, period takes nine and a half to sometimes 10 weeks, there are people who think that you should do nothing but sit on your hands during a Mercury retrograde. I've even had people write to me and say, uh, I love your work, love your videos, I want a live review, a uh, one-to-one, -one, but Mercury's retrograde at the moment, I'll be in search later. Fine, that's absolutely fine. But what about the other alternative perspective that Mercury retrograde in house two could be a good time to actually scrutinize your approach to finances or also your values because the second house isn't just about everyday money and it's also about our self-worth so you could find yourself particularly with Chiron in the sign of Aries your second house think about just how much you value yourself so that can be a big part of this month's story but I just want to take you back to that event chart at the start of the month because can you see just above Mars there, there's the icon of the moon and the sun. That's the midpoint. The moon's at 27.45, the sun is at 11.45. We add them together, divide them by two. That's the balance, the yin yang of this chart. This is the same for everyone. Everyone has the midpoint in Aquarius at 19 degrees. But for you, it's in the 12th house. And if you look at that position of Uranus, at 20 degrees 47 and I think you're going to find a lot of astrologers put an awful lot of emphasis on Jupiter's conjunction with Uranus but we're drilling deeper here so it means that 12th house energy Aquarius particularly with Pluto there something could come up this month that at the start of the month you're not aware of it could be a piece of information it could be someone's to be honest enmity because the 12th house can be in traditional astrology secret enemies. It may be someone doesn't have your best interests at heart. Maybe you need to do some scratching back to really understand the true 
dimensions of some of the influences that are going to unfold this month. So just be aware that you could feel a bit restless with your honor squaring up to the midpoint in the 12th house on edge as much as all the attention will go on the fact that Venus is combining with Neptune at the start of this month, which is magical, undoubtedly, and Jupiter's combining with Uranus in your third house, magical, undoubtedly. There are more subtle influences that we must be mindful of, particularly with Pluto in your 12th house, because you're going to go on a crash course, particularly from the 18th of November this year when Pluto moves back into Aquarius after its brief hiatus back into Capricorn from the 2nd of September. That's going to go on for some years and it is very much about the psychological domain. If you're someone, for example, who really, everything's fine with me. No, I cleared up all that stuff in the past. Um, you know, I don't have any baggage at all. Um, if that's your approach to life, Pluto, to be honest, could catch you out a little bit. If you're someone who's much more invested in personal development and working as a human being like we all are in a very humble way, then you're going to be able to embrace the power of Pluto very successfully. But it's if you don't feel that you have any vulnerabilities or you don't have any potential challenges coming to you from others. If only life was that simple, we do live in a very complex world. And of course, one of the most complex areas is that a lot of information gets shared digitally, which is governed by Uranus in the third house, very Gemini. So some information could come into the domain for you personally this month that could surprise you. I think once you've got over the shock, you can work with it in a really positive way. But let's revisit right at the start of the month. So Mercury goes retrograde later on on the 1st. But on the third, Venus, exalted in your sign, applies to Neptune in a magical way. And as I say, if you are a creative, you can really dazzle someone with your brilliance at this time. Another great piece of news to tell you, however, is that Venus soon moves on and alights in Aries on the fifth. Now, you may think, oh, it's essential dignity, it's detrimented. I like Venus in Aries. I think it's important to challenge the essential dignities. Yes, work with them. For example, you've had Venus in your sign where she is exalted, but she did apply to Saturn on the 21st. Well, that's one of the toughest influences possible. Just because she's in your sign and exalted doesn't take away that influence. So on the 5th, Venus moves into your sector of everyday money. So the fact that Mercury has gone retrograde is potentially challenging, but along comes Venus to give you a boost. And it may be that if you have been showcasing your brilliant talents, you're gonna get uh, messages of appreciation. People are going to salute your talents, but you could get an uptick around your finances. Also, you may be staggered to know or get to know you may not even find out about this immediately, but in due course, perhaps in future years to come, someone may make some kind of allowance for you in an estate or a will at this time. But as I say, they may not tell you. Because Venus is applying to Pluto in your 12th house in a very positive way. The other thing about Pluto in the 12th house if you've been working your absolute socks off over the last 16 years, the 11th house, connecting with people, being supportive in your community, doing a job that you had to put a lot of yourself into, being very sacrificing, being very caring to person kind, it can come back to you in a karmic way, very, very powerfully on that particular aspect, which to be honest, hasn't happened for over 220 years in these two signs together. The other karmic part of the fifth is the advancing sun meets the retreating north node. The north node, since the 13th of July 2023, has been asking you to be more conscious of what your core values are. The north node is very much to do with our direction collectively of travel. Your personal north node may not be in Aries and it may not also be in the second house. 
So this is very much about the collective as you being an ascendant sun or moon in Pisces. But the suggestion here is that you could find yourself poured in a particular way towards earning money or valuing yourself or valuing certain elements of life. For example, the second house is very much to do with agriculture. It's very Taurian, but the North Node is that inner pull. So if you've got an inner voice pulling you mesmerically towards some kind of new way of doing things, that's the North Node meeting with the Sun. So the fifth is a hugely important part of this month, despite the fact that Mercury retrograde is asking you to be very precise if you're doing on any online transactions. It may be that something that you've applied worth to is not as valuable as you thought. And it could be an attitude, a core idea. Maybe uh, you've got some savings or some possessions and you can change your relationship to them. Which brings us to the total solar eclipse of the 8th in the north and 9th in the southern hemisphere, which is within one degree of Chiron. What a great time to think about your self-worth. If your self-worth is really robust, you have no worries about it, you feel very secure in your identity, that's absolutely brilliant. So I really, really mean that. And this can be an opportunity for you to really go forwards over the next six months and be very successful when it comes to marshalling your resources. But remember, from the 6th through to the 15th, Mars in your sign applies to Saturn in your sign. If there is anything to do with an inner resistance about your direction of travel, you're not quite sure that you're on the right track or the creative or business idea you've got is not necessarily receiving all the plaudits or even the funding that you want, there could be a sense that things are against you. Keep the faith because from the 10th through to the 13th, the advancing sun meets the retreat in Mercury. It's exact on the 11th when we have a Kazemi. It's an inferior conjunction because Mercury is this side of the sun, but the sun still amplifies Mercury. So if you do need to analyze the Virgo energies of Mercury or think quickly the Gemini energies of Mercury or have a conversation, Gemini, or appraise something, and see where the benefits are, very Virgo. So a great opportunity to really examine something very precisely. 13th, Mercury applies to Chiron. Is your thinking self-limiting in some ways? Are you setting yourself up for things not to work out quite as well for you? Because in some way or another you've decided or someone put an idea in your head, Mercury, how you think, that you weren't quite as valuable as you actually are. So good time to, to think of that again. Your finances can take another turn for the better from the 14th to the 19th, exact on the 19th, where Mercury and Venus meet, one of the luckiest of all planetary aspects. Also, Venus applies to the node on the 17th, another absolute corker for fortune, and to the position of Chiron on the 21st, again, it's about finding within you that sense of worth. But that does bring us to the 19th. And this could be somewhat of a challenge in time. And the challenge goes on, to be honest, to the 23rd, because the sun applies to Pluto in a square, but actually the sun for you is in house three, which is quick. You know, life will speed up. You're going to want to be more interactive. You're moving towards that bubbly conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus, which is also supported by Mars in your sign. What's not to like? It's Pluto, I'm afraid. So remember that midpoint at the start of this month in Aquarius at 19 degrees, squaring up with Uranus in your third house. 312 energy can see things that have been simmering in the background come into the open. If you've told someone, for example, something in confidence in the past, but you're not so much on good terms now, and they feel that they can leverage that information, it's possible that they will. So this could be to do with someone at work who maybe is a little bit of a competitor or a rival, or in a situation where you need to be more combative, 
Unfortunately, if someone does know something about you which is not so great, they could be tempted to reveal it, or perhaps you're gonna find it more difficult to keep a confidence close to your chest. But generally speaking, Pluto in the 12th house is deep buried stuff. If there is deep buried stuff within you, someone may make an observation, third house, even quite innocently, oh, do you realize that you tend to respond in this way? And you may be staggered by their observation, but actually it could be pouring light through that communication into something that is a little bit in the dark, something that's more hidden, a shadow side of your nature. Now you can choose to feel threatened by the square with Pluto between the sun, or you can choose to embrace it. I would suggest the latter by the 23rd. The full moon in the passionate Scorpio, your sister water sign, sets up a 3-9 full moon, the third house of the sun, Jupiter, and of course also uh, Uranus, in an opposition with the moon in deep Scorpio, but again T-squared by Pluto. So it's going to be a lot more conversation towards the end of this month. Maybe you're going to let some things come up let some things go. Maybe things that you've held very deeply within you, some resentments, some unhappinesses, some judgments. If there is someone who doesn't respect you, you could give them a full volley in the last part of this month, particularly with Mercury going direct on the 25th, but then Venus moves to join up with the Sun. Jupiter and Uranus in the sign of Taurus, which is brilliant for you in terms of being chatty, vivacious, flirty. But 312, again, a secret could come into the open. Something that you've been feeling, someone, something someone else has been feeling. The best way to deal with this energy, genuinely, particularly with Mars applying to Neptune towards the end of this month, is to be really prepared to see that with Pluto in your 12th house, transitions are just going to be part of the process. You are going to shift enormously. Although your sign is one of the most compassionate of signs, and you can really give to people beyond what any other sign will consider, sometimes the biggest problem is that you give so much, you end up being hugely resentful about that and then feel like, like you're running on empty. What Pluto is asking you to do is become much more aware of your gift of giving, but also don't give it away to the wrong people. Whether it's verbal support, whether it's emotional support, whether it's through work, there has to be a boundary where you protect yourself. And that's about your thinking. But you can see with all the second house energy this month, a lot of it is based on how good you feel about yourself or not. It could be in a more practical way about finances, but I think it's about self-worth. So the big part of this month's adventure is about strengthening your self-worth. And in the last phase of the month, really enjoying interacting with people in a very bubbly way, but just be aware of the more psychological domain because that is hugely going to grow from here on in. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Pisces. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do check out my weekly in-depth forecast for each of the 12 signs, including Aries. But for now, please like, comment, share, or subscribe.